Seats. Welcome to the Belleville Board of Education meeting, March 18th. Could everyone please rise for the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States and to the Republic. Okay, the board would like to just take a, a moment of silence for Councilwoman Marie Burke, who passed away recently. Okay, Matt Palladino, please call the roll. The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend meetings of this board, except where specifically exempted by law, at what time any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having same advertised in the Belleville Times. Also, notice of this meeting has been mailed to the members of the Board of Education, the borough clerk, all elementary schools, the middle school, the high school, Hornblower Early Childhood Center, and posted on the district website. Also, this means being televised via the district's YouTube and Facebook pages. With that said, Trustee Darrow? Here. Trustee Massaggio? Here. Trustee Muniz? Here. Trustee Pacheco? Here. Trustee Williams? Here. Vice President Dadis? Here. And President Benamini? Here. Okay, and could I have a motion to approve the minutes from February 26th, closed and public session? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Well, I, that's right. Yes, I'm going to abstain from the February 26th meeting. I was not here. Okay, and let's just get a report very. Um, Right now, from our student government representative, Rayanne. Good evening, everyone. Starting off with some updates, we're pleased to announce the successful conclusion of the Battle of the Classes shirt sale last Friday, the 15th. The Battle of the Classes event itself is scheduled for late May. In recent weeks, the Spanish Club collaborated with the Culinary Arts Department for a cross curricular activity teaching students how to make empanadas. Last week, the juniors com competed the NJGPA over two challenging days, wrapping up on Friday the 15th after starting on Thursday the 14th. Progress reports have been finalized and are now available for students and their parents to review. This week kicks off Merch Madness, a spirited merch sale organized by the Sophomore Student Council, offering a variety of Belleville spirit wear. Later in the month, they will also host an Easter Graham fundraiser, selling candy bags and delivering them to classrooms. Looking ahead to April, the Student Government Organization will be hosting its second bingo night of the year on the 17th. This event is open to all students and staff, offering a chance to win various prizes. That's all for now. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you. That was wonderful. All right, I'm moving on to superintendent's report. We'll take a report from Dr. Tomko, and then he will guide us into some great presentations that we have for this evening. Thank you, Madam President. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Um, whoop. We have a pretty packed agenda, so let's get right to it. Um, just want to say that uh, I appreciate everyone coming out tonight for our uh, Women's Month celebration and also our uh, Governor and Educator Teachers of the Year. Um, this is just an incredible time uh, in all the schools across New Jersey where we get to celebrate um, everyone in the trenches who really do the, the incredible work for our kids every day. So thank you all for coming out. But without further ado, let's have uh, Ms. Demikoff. Ms. Demikoff? Ms. Demikoff is going to uh, open us up with um, a few presentations from our students. So thank you, Ms. Demikoff.
Good evening, Dr. Tomko, members of the Board of Education, members of our Belleville community. Once again, I am always honored and very, very delighted to stand here in front of you and present our students K on through 12. Tonight we have a few women's history presentations and they are coming out of school number four, our Belleville Middle School, and then we have two students who will be recognized for their entries in the Sister Rose Thering competition, which was an essay competition on social justice. So I would like to invite Mrs. Peppy to come up, please, from school number four. Okay, we have four students. If you can please come up. Jaslyn Tapan, Gabrielle Grant, Ariana Santiago, and Caleb Johnson. Oh, we also have Mrs. Knitchell here. I didn't you were coming. I'm sorry. Ms. Knitchell is also one of our talented and gifted teachers at school number four. Our school four students are going to be presenting on famous women in history, women of their choice.
My name is Caleb Johnson. I'm in fourth grade, and the person I did was Michelle Obama. My name is Michelle Obama. My birthday is January 17, 1964. I was born in Chicago, Illinois. My husband was Barack Obama. My children are Maria and Obama and Sasha Obama. One of my famous quotes is, successfully meaningful and enjoyable if it feels like you're wrong. The reason I was important is because I was the first African American First Lady of the United States. Here are different facts about me. I exercise for 90 minutes three times a week. I wouldn't go out with Barack Obama for to play a game with my brother. I left a career in corporate law to work in public. My name is Ariana Santiago. I'm in fifth grade, and I did my project on the Hawaiian queen, Lily Uokalani. I'm the queen of Lily Uokalani. I was born September 2, 1838, in Honolulu, Hawaii. I married John Owen Dominus and adopted three children. John, I'm Loki Dominus, Lydia, Kaono Hiponi Pony Okalani Aholo, and Joseph Kaipona Hia I work to bring back power to the Hawaiian monarchy and my people. My favorite quote of mine is throw away Opala or trash from the garden of your heart and let only golden blossoms of Ohola grow there. Live Aloha. The US overthrew me and didn't have any and I didn't have any biological food. I died at the age of 79 on November 11, 1917. Washington Place, Honolulu, Hawaii. Hi, my name is Gabrielle Odom Grant, and I and I um, searched Harriet Tubman. I'm in second grade. I was born in 1822 in Dorchester County, Maryland. I died in 1913 in Auburn, New York. I married Nelson Davis and John Tubman. My child's name is Bertie Davis. I said I will fight for my liberty so as long as my strength lasted. And if the time came for me, the Lord would let them take me. I was important because I helped many enslaved people escape. I was a spy at the age of 91, I was, and I was a union scout. Okay, great job. And that was school number four. Our students received certificates. Once you receive your certificate, you can stand right in front of the stage and your parents will come up and take a picture. Jaslyn Tapon, grade four. Gabrielle Grant, grade two. Congratulations. Ariana Santiago, grade five. And Caleb Johnson, grade four. Great job, Caleb. Mrs. Cavallo, would you like to come up and take a picture with your students? Thank you, teachers. Moving on, I'd like to invite Ms. Beltran to please come up with her middle school students. We have seventh graders presenting this evening. Thank you. 
they can pass the microphone. Okay. Stand in front of the stage. Everyone stand in front of the stage. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Araceli Moroch. We're presenting the Museum of Discovery History of Humans, March 1824. My name is Cunoleta Ayrton. My name is Dana Oska. My name is Nashla Cabrera. My name is Matias Miranda. My name is Diego Fernandez. My name is Hilary Siguencia. Today we're presenting the Museum of Discovery History Hearings, March 1824. Aya Baker, let us celebrate Aya Baker, the independent black woman who inspired the ideas of grassroots for equal rights, civil, civil rights, and guide Dr. King's Southern Christian leadership while according the Student Nonviolent Committee. For these reasons, Baker is the mother of the civil rights movement. Nuestro espíritu de celebración para ella, Baker, la independencia afro afroamericana, que inspiró los ideales por la igualdad de derechos civiles y aconsejó el liderazgo cristiano del sur, del Dr. King. Mientras coordinaba el Comité de No Violencia de Estudiantes, por estas razones, Baker es la madre del movimiento por derechos civiles. The Mirabel sisters, from 1930 to 1961, thousands of people were imprisoned and murdered under Rafael Trujillo's dictatorship in the Dominican Republic. Mirabel sisters led an underground revolution secretly named Long Live the Butterflies. They are courage inspiring many f to fight for establishment and democratic government. And it threatened a dictator that were brutally murdered for being women and activists. Durante 1930 a 1961, miles de personas fueron asesinadas bajo la directora de tra Rafael Trujillo en República Dominicana. Estas hermanas lideraron una revolución clandestina llamada Larga Vida Tengan las Mariposas. Valentía, su valentía inspiró a muchos a luchar por un sistema democrático por ser consideradas un obstáculo para el régimen trujilista. Ellas fueron brutalmente asesinadas por ser mujeres activistas. Manuela Sainz is the Libertos of the Libertos for her bravery and active participation as an activist under the leadership of the Libertor Simón Bolívar. She played a crucial role in the struggle for the Latin American independence for Ecuador and Peru in 1822. Her legacy endures as a prominent fighter for women's rights in South America history and inspired all future generations. Manuela Sáenz es la libertadora de los libertadores por su valentía y participación activa en actividades revolucionarias bajo el liderazgo del libertador Simón Bolívar. Ella jugó un, un papel crucial en la lucha de, por los movimientos 
de independencia latinoamericanos de Ecuador y Perú en 1822. Su legado perdura como una destaca luchadora por los derechos de las mujeres en la historia de América del Sur e inspiró a nuestras generaciones futuras. Thank you very much, students. Don't go anywhere yet. You have certificates. Matias Miranda. Aracele Morocho. Hilary Seguncia. Diego Fernandez. Dana Uzaka, <laughs> Matias Kunalata, <laughs> Nashla Cabrera, <laughs> and Dominica Dominguez. <laughs> Dominica will give hers tomorrow. Okay, parents, if you'd like to come up and take a picture. Mr. Royal, if you'd like to come up and join your middle school students. Ms. Beltran. And we'll take a quick picture. Thank you, Belleville Middle School. Excellent job, students. At this time, I'd like to invite Mr. Velasquez's students from Belleville Middle School to please come up. We have four students from Mr. Velasquez's class who are presenting on black history as well as women's history. Hello, my name is Sofia Peña Fiel. I am a seventh grader from the Middle School Middle School. My name is Sofia Velez. I'm also a seventh grader from BMS. Good evening, everyone. Today, I would like to bring to your attention Amanda Gorman, an inspiring individual who has significant contributions to both Black History and Women's History Month. As we reflect on her powerful words, I am reminded of one of her most notable quotes. There is always light. If we are brave enough to see it, if we are brave enough to be it. We selected Amanda Gorman's quote because it motivates us to stay optimistic during challenging times and to take courageous action. It inspires us to discover the light even in the darkest moments and strive for positive change. Here are three facts about Ms. Gorman. She was born on March 7, 1998 and is 26 years old today. She has written for the New York Times and is recognized as the youngest poet in US history. Thank you for listening, and may Women's History Month and Black History Month continue, even if the days don't. Injustice everywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. This means that this school means that if injustice in the way will be allowed anywhere, or will successfully be allowed anywhere in the world. This message is important because it highlights how injustice 
uh, should be stopped everywhere and not accepted at all. One small action can cause more small actions around the world. It shows how everyone sh should be accepted regardless of race, gender, or religion. Martin Luther King Jr. was an advocate for equal rights for everyone for his whole life. He held many protests to make his dream come true. This included a speech and protest in Washington, D.C. He also led a bus boycott that lasted for 381 days. All of these protests eventually led to equal treatment for everybody. He also went to jail for multiple times because of these peaceful protests, even though they were completely legal. He was eventually killed while on a balcony with his friends in 1968. Even to this day, Martin Luther King's legacy lives on and inspires people around the world. Because of this man, the world has less discrimination. Here's some facts about Martin Luther King. Did you know Martin Luther King's have a dream poem was improvised? Did you also know that he entered college at the age of 15? Not only that, but he was also arrested 29 times during his, his whole life. He also survived an assassination attempt a decade before his actual death. And after he died, his family filed a civil case against the government and won. Yeah. Goodbye. Okay, great job, Belleville Middle School. Here are your certificates, and then we'll take a picture. We have Sophia Penafiel. Congratulations. Sophia Velez. Jake Lacey. And we have Xavier Garcia. Great job. You're welcome. Mr. Royal, come on up. Parents, if you'd like to come and take a picture. Thank you once again, Belleville Middle School. Great job. And those are our women's history and black history presentations. Okay, before we conclude, I'd like to invite Ms. Omaima Omerer to come up, please. Two of her students at Belleville Middle School entered the Sister Rose Thering Literary Arts and Video Competition, and the theme was social justice. We had a first place winner who was Judah Cook. Judah, would you please come up? Judah is in eighth grade. Yes. Judah created a YouTube video and it runs about two minutes. We are going to play the clip for you. Thank you. 
changed the perspective of people with disabilities. And for that, I am thankful. From Sister Rose fighting for the rights of Jews, to Helen Keller fighting for the rights of women and people with disabilities, we should continue to learn and to study the many impacts that public figures have made. Now, if it's your aspiration, how would you Thank you, Judah. That was excellent. Here is your certificate. Thank you. I'd like to now invite Josanne Ibrahim. She's going to read a poem for us on social injustice. Josanne earned honorable mention in this competition. Light amidst shadows. The brave and honorable Nicholas Winton, a man beyond compare. He rescued children from the Holocaust with unmatched care. Like Sister Rose, he fought against injustice, brave and unfaltering. The savior of these children in need with courage unwavering. Nicholas Winton, brave and true, saved kids from harm, a hero through. Against injustice, he took a stand, guiding children to a safer land. In shadows dark, his light did gleam, a beacon strong in a world extreme. His caring heart, a guiding creed, a savior in a time of need. Thank you. Okay, thank you once again, Belleville Middle School. Thank you, Miss O'Marer. And we can now take a picture. And thank you everyone for listening. Great job, students. Thank you again, Ms. Demikoff. Uh, let's give all our students a round of applause. Excellent job. All right, so we have some uh, additional honors tonight. I was talking a little bit before about uh, our incredible staff and um, our faculty members, our administrators. Uh, it really is an incredible place. Uh, constantly working. These are just a few of the projects that you've seen for this month, but. Uh, we're, we're absolutely engaged in all these things that, that we know post-COVID that, that have been happening uh, with regard to learning loss and um, you know, uh, responses to interventions and we're just very proud of everything that uh, our kids are doing and also that our teachers are doing uh, in their classrooms. So tonight we get to honor uh, some of those teachers uh, and their, their colleagues are here tonight to cheer them on. Uh, but first let's start with uh, if uh, Mr. Rhodes, Mr. Pedro could come down for, uh, we do have uh, an honor tonight because Belleville has a, um, one of our counselors is here for counselor of the year for the county. So I won't steal their thunder. Pedro's at work tonight. Thanks for coming. Good evening, everyone. This past March 15th, uh, at the New Jersey School Counselors Association luncheon, I had the pleasure of acknowledging and presenting the 2024 Essex County School Counselor of the Year, Belleville's very own Mrs. Marilyn Carucci. Here up here, Ms. Carucci, come on. She's making her way. 
I summed up my remarks by noting one of Mrs. Karuchi's strengths, and that is that she is unassuming and never lets her level of experience, all 12 years of it, dictate what our students need. It influences how she helps her students, but it does not dictate, because as we all know, our students are not the same. And so this is one of the many reasons why I believe her colleagues voted her this year's Essex County School Counselor of the Year, and we are incredibly proud of you. Congratulations, Mrs. Finch. So we're going to change up the order since Mr. Rhodes is right here. So we'll start with the high school. Mr. Caleb Rhodes. Mr. Rhodes, how are you? Thanks for coming today. This is great. I've been here for seven years. The first time I get to go first. Usually I have a lot of, you know, really, really good speeches to follow. So uh, tonight we'll, we'll first uh, recognize the high school governor educator of the year, who this year for the high school is Miss Judy Porter. So, so my, my first introduction to Judy was uh, when I got here seven years ago. I'm taking a look at people's offices and I'm seeing this frog. And there's a frog on the shelf and a frog on the shelf and a frog on the shelf. And I said, Where, Where's everyone getting these frogs? They said, I guess you haven't met Judy yet. So when I met Judy, Judy uh, gave me a frog sitting in a lotus pose which I, I guess comes to mean something in terms of yoga with being grounded, relaxed, focused. And, and so I, I do take a, 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 pretty much every day take a look at it at some point, realize, you know, stay grounded. But that's what Judy brings uh, each and every day to her students. She's always there for them. Uh, she, she heads up our work-based learning program. She helps to place students, keep them in jobs, uh, continue to make sure that they need to do what they need to do to graduate. Um, she it, truly cares about her students, and, and you know at the, the second part of her job is in the in the culinary capacity. So she works in our culinary arts program, does a phenomenal job with that as well. So Judy, congratulations! Thank you. And next we have our Educational Services Professional of the Year, who this year for the high school is Jenny Russell. Jenny Russell. Thank you. Jenny is uh, one of our social workers here at the high school. She works uh, specifically with our, no, it's not psychologist, psychiatrist, I'm sorry. Sorry, psychiatrist. Um, she works with, uh, specifically with our life skills program. She uh, really has done a phenomenal job in the time that she's been here. Uh, one of the things I do like to do when I, I, I uh, ask for nominations for these uh, different awards is I ask our teachers to, to speak a little bit on what their experiences were with this teacher, or, or in this case, uh, our psychiatrist. Um, one of the things that really stood out to me was that Jenny is one of the rare people who is the embodiment of knowledgeable behavioral health professional while maintaining a warm and comforting rapport with our students. And that really goes a long way with our kids, especially the population that she's working with each and every day. And so Jenny, thank you very much for everything you do. time for the high school. Congratulations, excellent job. Thank you. Let's go to the middle school, Mr. Romero. How are you, sir? Very well, thank you. Wow, this is early for us. 
Usually I take bits and pieces and make right speeches and make it funny and turn the words against it. <laughs> but listen, tonight we'll start with our education support professional. Our nurse, Astrid Tapia. Come on up. So Ash has been a great addition to the middle school. We lost our nurse a couple of years ago. We were so worried about who was coming in next. She came in and missed a beat. She, she comes in, she asks some serious questions. Whenever she comes to my office, it's very serious. If she knocks, I know it's gonna be serious. But she asks every question one time. And that's it. Once she, has, she gets the answer, she moves forward. She's very good at calling the parents. I trust her with everything. We love her at the middle school. She makes the best mini. And oh, what's that? Empanadas with a special <laughs> dipping sauce. So, a special hot sauce, she said. Delicious in the morning. When I smell that, I said, yeah, I know, I know she made those empanadas. So thank you very much. We appreciate it very much. Thank you, Ashley. Congratulations. Thank you. Next up, we have our educator of the year, longtime veteran. Come on up, Doreen Molinaro. <laughs> Just like in Doreen fashion. Listen, one thing about Doreen, she's gonna tell you what's on her mind. It's usually good stuff. Usually she has something positive to say, something good about the school. You know, just a great, great person. You know, last five years she's been crying at the beginning of the school year. She knows she's close to retirement. I think she's trying to outweigh everybody else, wait for that 40 years, hit that mark. But we will take every minute we can get to Doreen. Doreen has always, always been welcoming to me seven years ago. I mean, the first thing she said to me, she came to my office, yeah, the month. So look, Mr. Ryan, I hate to bother you, but the staff refrigerator downstairs has to go. <laughs> and we have many other stories. Even during the pandemic, our first meeting online, during it, so from the start, said, I can't do this, Mr. Ryan. I can't, how am I teach you all the kids in front of me? And then by the second meeting, she's coaching people on how to <laughs> go online and, and work digitally. So she's been wonderful, wonderful addition. I even told her this morning, she parks right next to me. And today she was struggling with, with her lanyard, right? And so I said, do you need help? She said, no, I'll get it. And so as I'm walking in the building, she said, I got it. And I knew she would have it. You always have it. Congratulations, sir. School 10, school number 10. I like this reverse order. I was expecting to be one of the last ones. So our teacher of the year is someone who makes our school a better place. And as you all know, or maybe don't know, um, the teachers, the peers, the parents, the students are asked to nominate our Teacher of the Year, and what they told me about him is that he makes all the students happy. The kids look forward to his class and always walk out talking about what happened and waiting for the next one. This person also waits outside with me every single morning, no matter what the weather is. He never wears a jacket. I don't have any refrigerator stories about him yet, but there's still time. Mr. Chiodo is our physical education teacher at School 10, and he's also at School 9 and our kids absolutely love him. He handles some challenging subjects when he's talking about health, 
but he does it gracefully. Not, not easy to do for such a large man. I had to make a comment. <laughs> and he sets an, a great example to all of our students about sportsmanship. The kids love him, we're fortunate to have him. I don't have anything but positive things to say about Mr. Chiodo, who today is wearing a long sleeve shirt. Come on up here, Mr. Kevin Chiodo. <laughs> All right, I don't think Mrs. Chiodo wants to be in the picture. All the kids in here too. All right, our next person, our service professional of the year is a little bit unorthodox. It's Mr. Tom Gazzo, he is our security guard. He actually couldn't be here today because he's recovering from surgery, but I did send him the link and he did text me and say the whole family's there watching. Um, he's another one who, and it's such a small school, it's not, we don't have a lot of service professionals. This guy, he welcomes his students every single day. He also stands outside with me, so I guess if anything, if you guys want to be next year, stand outside. Um, he's welcoming, he's positive, he's more than a security guard. He volunteers for everything. He decorates all of our fundraisers. He you know, takes the kids to the nurse. He follows all the district initiatives. Um, and he just knows all the kids. I mean, he's been in the building for a while. He's with me three days a week and he knows all of our students. He knows what they do. He asks them about their day. The teachers love him. I'm going to accept the award on behalf of Mr. Gazzo, but when he returns from his surgery, he'll be excited to get it. And I'm sure he'll have a cup of coffee for me. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, and I do see some people leaving, I understand, but just uh, I wanted to just mention uh, on the way out or when you came in, there's uh, refreshments from our culinary students. Uh, they do it every year, so I want to give them a round of applause for all their hard work. And our teachers, thank you so much. Mr. Rotunda, Mr. Rotunda, School 9, come on down. Good evening, Dr. Tomko, members of the board, distinguished guests. Tonight is my honor and privilege to shine the spotlight on Donna Wrench, who stands as the, the epitome of an excellence in education as our esteemed teacher of the year. Quick story about Donna. Her and I went, started in school together at Holy Family in Nutley from kindergarten to eighth grade. So she got her punishment now because now she's stuck with me as her boss. So I just... Um, not to take up a lot of time, but she's the epitome. She's our head teacher. She's always willing to lend a helping hand. She really cares about our children. And she's also, for a lot of she's my right hand. She tells me about things that might happen in order to get ahead of them. Um, and she's got a really great pulse in our school. So this was an easy, easy, easy. She's always in the running every year, I should say. That's how good she is. So I'd like to congratulate Donna. Please come down. Miss Donna Wrench, thank you. And our um, educational service professional is Antonella Fasolino Parapato. I had to get the Parapato in, Jeff. Well, maybe she'll change her name eventually. 
But I, um, this is another e easy one to give. Antonella is one of those people who is always willing to help, um, jumps in whenever there's needed, whenever I need uh, you know, coverage or lunch, to watch the kids at lunch, whatever. She's always willing to help. Um, just We were sad to see her go this year because she became an interventionist, but she is with us two and a half days a week. So we, But when she told me last year she was, we were going to lose her as a full-time teacher, it was a little hard. But she's still here. We still enjoy having her. And she's always, like I said, goes um, head into everything, hard worker. So Antonella, please come up. Thank you very much. And school eight, Mr. Giacchetti, who are you? I thought I saw you. Oh, there you are. I'm looking over there. I'm like, where are you? You kind of like snuck in there. It's like camouflage. To start, I'd like to thank Dr. Tomko, the Belleville Board of Education, our Belleville School community, for being here tonight to honor all of these amazing educators in our district. I'd like to thank everyone that makes up our school eight community for everything that you do every day. We would not be able to support, educate, and care for our students with every person in our building. Tonight we're here to celebrate the accomplishments and contributions of two members of the School Aid community. First, our Governor Educator of the Year, Ms. Josephine Palmieri. Come on down. Thank you. Ms. Palmieri is involved in all things School Aid serving on various committees, assisting with school functions. She's a dedicated professional. She's pas passionate about teaching. She's an advocate for children. She's diligent, caring, and thoughtful. Congratulations, Ms. Palmieri. Up next is our School Aid Ed Service Professional of the Year. Just a quick funny story this morning. I came back to my office and there was a box of pastries on my desk with a note. Mr. Giacchetti, hope you enjoy these, have a great day. I didn't understand why they were there and then I remembered she was getting honored tonight, so maybe a few extra nice words, I don't know. Um, our, our Ed Service Professional of the Year is Educational Interventionist, Ms. Gianna Cabellis. Ms. Cabellas prepares engaging and creative lessons uh, for her students on a daily basis. She's one of the brightest and most dedicated teachers you will find. She's a true professional and involved in the entire school community. She's also genuinely one of the nicest people to work with. Congratulations, Ms. Cabellas. Thank you, School 8. School number 7, Mr. Belton, School number 7. Come on up. The Parapato family's leaving. Here's the Parapato girls. They're leaving. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Tomko and Distinguished Board of Education. Thank you, trustees, for giving us this event to present to two of our amazing staff members over at school number seven. I do like embarrassing them, so with our 2023-24 Educational Serv Service Provider of the Year, can I get Miss Nicole Marcella? Come on up, please. And Ms. Marcella is here. Ms. Marcella is our RTI interventionist over at school number seven that works also at school number five. RTI is a program at its infancy stages, but this person to my left has left an, uh, an amazing imprint 
on what that program is. It is safe to say that Nicole has made a lasting impression on the development of the entire RTI process. But more importantly, she has left a lasting impact on the students she serviced by providing them the highest quality of education. Ms. Marcella is a professional educator that is dedicated to her craft to provide all students with supports to maximize their abilities to gain confidence. From the endless data dives, to parent meetings, to the late night conversations with our RTI coordinator, Ms. Diwali, to supporting teachers within the classroom, to providing focused support in areas they need, and to correlating data to support students' potential. Ms. Muscala does it all. A few words from her colleague, Ms. Diwali. Nicole is truly cares about school number seven students. She is eager to develop strategies, collaborate, and share materials to allow students to the ability to learn and in a more multi-sensory approach. Nicole is warm, 100%, to all of her students, and most importantly, to the parents. Now, for me, the word advocate is thrown around education a lot. With that, she truly embodies all of those characteristics because she wants to make sure every student receives the best quality education. Not a day goes by that Ms. Marcello does not influence a student's life with her commitment to her craft. She is constantly motivating students to utilize their problem-solving skills and strive to maximize my, the, the strengths of our students. It's my distinct honor and privilege this year to present this award to one of the most dedicated workers at school number seven. I appreciate it. I, I'm not making fun of you. You're too good at this. <laughs> Who slurs your name at seven? Oh, I know. I think that's the only thing. That was almost healthy. <laughs> Big round of applause, everyone. Okay. Now, I've been waiting for this one for six years, uh, so Miss Christine Mendez, Mendez, come on up. She is our 2023-24 Educator of the Year. All right, you ready? All right. Okay, Miss Mendez is our fourth grade ELA slash writing slash science instructor here at school number seven that displays unparalleled commitment to her students and to school number seven to display very important potentials to make sure they are both working to their ability inside the classroom as well as outside. Each day, Ms. Mendez pushes herself to be the best educator she could be, but to make sure all of her students are provided with the best opportunities to succeed in life. Ms. Mendez is an educator that when, you, when she walks into the room, you notice she is in the room. And her presence and her unique ability to feel the temperature of the room. I mean, literally, she's yelling at everybody, it's way too cold, way too hot in our rooms all the time, so she keeps me on my toes. With that, Ms. Mendez also is an educator that really promotes and working with her is extremely important because every day is an adventure in a good way. While making faculty and skip meetings entertaining to say the least, most by starting every meeting with her announcing that she is here and she is ready to go. That's five minutes late to the meeting as well. I'm just kidding, just kidding, you're on, you're on time all the time. Now, Ms. Mendez has a way to connect with her students and maximize the, abil the abilities of her coworkers. Now, one of her closest colleagues, Ms. Nicodemi, I'm not gonna say how many years they have shared a room and an area together, at school number seven, but they've been teaching in the same rooms as they once started, in the same position, without one disagreement. Miss Nicodemi wanted me to tell everyone, it lasts a little bit longer than most marriages because it's 20 something years, I believe, 23 years, so they do a great job together. But Miss Nicodemi expressed that Miss Mendez has the unique ability to make a lasting impression on every child that walks into her classroom. And the school turns into the most wonderful place for that child to be at that time. Her passion and dedication are on display every day and most importantly evident through the actions and accomplishments of her students. 
that she inspires on a daily basis. Each day, her students leave her classrooms with their heads held a little bit higher, knowing that they could accomplish any task that is given their way. Her compassion and persistence to making an impact on each student, regardless of their skill, makes them feel very important and unique, is what makes Ms. Mendez our Teacher of the Year. Congratulations, Ms. Mendez. All right, School 5, Ms. Gilligan. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here, for honoring all these great educators. Um, tonight, School 5 is going to be honoring Miss Yvette Aupont, our power professional. Miss Yvette, come on down. Okay. Miss Yvette is our power professional uh, in one of our special education classrooms. Come on up, Miss Yvette. Miss Yvette is exceptional at what she does, serving our students with special needs. The entire class and teachers depend on her daily to assist in keeping the room running smoothly, following routines, and addressing any problems that might arise, and she addresses them quickly and efficiently. Ms. Aupont has a reputation for being firm but fair. During the nomination process, one colleague stated, Yvette has my utmost respect. And I don't think our power professionals hear that enough, but that was a great line. Ms. Opont never misses a day of work, and we sometimes take that for granted, but it's not intentional. We just get used to dependable people always being there. That's why these awards are so important. It makes us stop to intentionally let our staff members know just how much we appreciate them, and that certainly holds true for Ms. Yvette. Ms. Yvette's presence in the classroom and in the building provides stability for students, especially being there every single day. What I love most about my power professional is the way I see her handling challenging situations. I agree with a staff member that wrote, Miss Yvette always remains positive yet firm. She executes her job with skill and a wonderful sense of humor. Laughter cannot be underestimated. And with Miss Yvette around, there's never a shortage of that. Yvette, for your dedication and your work in the classroom and for your undying sense of humor under varying circumstances, you are our 2023-2024 Educational Service Professional of the Year. Congratulations. I'd be lost without you. And also, I'd like to honor tonight, thank you, Ms. Tony Castellani for our educator, our governor's educator of the year. Could you please come down, Ms. Castellani? <laughs> Tony is our fourth grade ELA teacher. She is known in our building as being hardworking and conscientious. She is also known for being a bit of a perfectionist. Anyone who has worked with Tony knows she only wishes to do what is right in all circumstances. One teacher commented that Tony does her work well and thoroughly all the time. Tony is also reflective, which means she's always looking to improve upon her own practice. She will offer different ways she could have executed a lesson, and good just isn't good enough for Tony. So very often we go into the classrooms, we, we walk through, see what the teachers are doing, think, you know, maybe an observation. 
and then we, we sit and talk. But before I can even get started, she'll sit down. No, I know, I know, I could have done this better. You know what, I should have done this. And all I wanted to tell her was, that was really a great lesson, Tony. But she like rakes herself all the clothes, so she's very, very reflective. That's the only thing I would say about Tony. She's very hard on herself, and she does a great job. Tony also taught kindergarten. She was a math teacher, and I don't know if there's any specialist in the room, but she went from math to teaching fourth grade ELA. So she's done a lot of things, and she does them well because she's so incredibly hardworking and reflective of her own practice. Ms. Castellani is also always in communication with her colleagues who share her students in order to ensure they get what they need to be successful. This is putting into action the true spirit of a teacher who cares about her students. And when Tony speaks about her students, she knows every important detail about them. This is a clear indication Ms. Castellani is paying attention. She's attentive to her class. And all, while, all the while appearing enthusiastic and happy when she's teaching. It's a pleasure working with Ms. Castellani, and it's teachers like Tony that makes my job easier. For these reasons and many more, congratulations, Ms. Castellani. You are our 2023-2024 educator, Thank governor's you. educator of the year. All right, school for Ms. Cavallo. Ms. Cavallo. The cheering section. <laughs> Miss. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'd just like to start by um, thanking my school for staff. You're all here, and that means the world. That just goes to show you um, what a school for a family is. And here we are. So I am so grateful for all of you. I really, really am. That's for you. So having said that, um, tonight we celebrate, we recognize, but we celebrate all of you. We definitely are going to celebrate Ashley Watkins, because if you think you're not going to come up here, come on, Ash. Let's go. Come on. I told you you were going to come up. So, Ms. Ashley Watkins is our educational service professional for School 4. Yeah. Ashley is um, one of the most wonderful, one, not now, wonderful people you have ever met. She is our speech teacher, but she's more than that. She is dedicated, and she's loving, and she's always smiling, and even on the toughest days. And we've had tough days. We've definitely had some tough days at four. And she smiles, and she's resilient, and it makes me so proud to have you by my side as my colleague and honestly just educating our children. This is what we want with our children right here. So congratulations, you are amazing and I love you. Congrats, congrats. Okay, Miss Ramondo, well, my other Ashley, come on up. You also knew I was gonna do this, right? Okay. So. Ashley has worked with me for quite some time now, a few years, right? About nine? About nine. Nine years. Um, when I first met Ashley, she was in pre-K with the little guys and just uh, making it happen there. Um, Ashley's done a few different things, but right now we're working with all our special children who um, really, really need Ashley. I really need Ashley. 
school four really needs Ashley. And um, what you do every day, Ash, is amazing. She steps up. There is never, that's not me. I'm not doing that. That's not my job. I never hear that. Never. She volunteers when she sees that it's getting complicated. She really tries to uncomplicate things. And if you think I don't notice, I notice a lot. Um, both of my Ashleys, right, um, are so dedicated and so compassionate and so loving, and that's what makes them special. And I'm grateful to have you by my side. Congratulations. Ms. Verneri, School 3. Good evening. Good evening. Dr. Tomko, Belleville Board of Education and the Belleville community. I would like to ask Ms. Lita Katugno to please come up and join me at the podium. We gather tonight to celebrate excellence in education and to honor remarkable individuals who embody the very essence of teaching greatness. It is with great pride and admiration that I stand before you to congratulate Lita for being named Governor Educator of the Year. Lita, your dedication, passion, and commitment to your students have not only enriched their lives, but has also left a mark on our school community. Your innovative approach to teaching your tireless efforts and genuine care for each and every student sets a standard of excellence that inspires us all. Lita, on behalf of the entire school community, I extend my heartfelt congratulations and deepest gratitude for your outstanding contributions to education. Thank you for your extraordinary work, <laughs> your enthusiasm, your dedication to shaping the future leaders of tomorrow, you are an inspiration and very fortunate, and we are very fortunate to have you as part of our team. Congratulations once again, Ms. Contugno, on this well-deserved deserved honor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next up for school three is, um, unfortunately, our uh, next will not be able to be here tonight. So I will be accepting the award for him. Um, tonight I'd like to honor, of I have the honor of recognizing an individual whose dedication and commitment to safety has been a cornerstone of our school community. It is with great pride that I present the Educational Service Professional Award to Mr. Brian Kearns, School 3's Security Officer. And I hope wherever he is tonight, because I know he couldn't be here. I'm hoping that he can tune into this link at some point and watch it. Brian, we just want you to know that your vigilance, professionalism, and commitment to ensuring the safety and security of our students, our staff, and the visitors has not gone unnoticed. Your presence is more than a uniform. It is a symbol of trust and reassurance for us all. Brian, on behalf of the entire school community, I extend my heartfelt gratitude for your outstanding service. Your dedication is truly commendable and we are very fortunate to have you as an integral part of our team. 
Congratulations, Mr. Kearns, on this well-deserved honor. Thank you for your tireless efforts in keeping our school safe and secure. You are a true asset to our community, and we are very deeply grateful for all that you do. Congratulations again. He's never missed a meeting here, first one he's ever missed. So. He did that on purpose, I think. And last but not least, heck, Miss Sharkey. Good evening, everybody. So it is my honor to present uh, Hex Governor Educator of the Year this year to Ms. Geraldine Lotza. <laughs> Ms. Lotza is an exceptionally talented teacher and professional. She always arrives at the building with a smile, ready to welcome her students and the day with the same positive outlook. This extends to contributing to the building culture as she's always fun to be around. Ms. Lotza consistently goes above and beyond for her students and for Hornblower. She chairs our gardening and butterfly committees. She's often the first one to volunteer or to, or to take on to any challenge or task. Ms. Lotza skillfully plans and implements lessons that engage her students in a fun, creative manner that supports all of their individual needs. She's flexible in her decision making and thinks outside of the box. Ms. Lotza demonstrates care and understanding in a calm and nurturing manner. She's a dedicated, hardworking educator, and we truly are fortunate to have her as a member of our family. And now to honor our Educational Specialist Professional of the Year, Ms. Brianna Tropiano, our school nurse. <laughs> Ms. Tropiano is our beloved nurse who not only leads our building in medical measures, but is a constant presence of help and support throughout the day, mainly to myself. Ms. Tropiano provides consistent medical care and is an informative resource for families and all staff members. She delivers interventions in a calm, kind manner always making students and parents feel comfortable. Ms. Tropiano develops relationships with each of her students and their families, always maintaining confidentiality and sensitivity to suit every need. She's dependable, a great team member who leads in times of crisis. Ms. Tropiano is a true asset to Hornblower and we could not run our building without her. From the Hornblower community and staff, thank you Ms. Tropiano for everything you do. All right, let's give everybody another round of applause for our teachers of the year, our service professionals of the year, all of our teachers out of here. Thank you very much. We appreciate everything. Um, we're going to continue through with the meeting, so if you all want to stay, we're going to have Mr. Bliss come up from our accounting firm. Thank you, Dr. Tomko. Good evening, board members. It's a pleasure to be here tonight to uh, present the audit for the year ended June 3rd through 23. Um, one of the main uh, goals of the audit is for us to express an opinion 
on your financial statements and express an opinion on your compliance with state and federal grants. Um, I'm happy to report that our opinion on the financial statements are unmodified or a clean opinion, meaning the financial statements are fairly stated, uh, they're prepared in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles, and there were no scope limitations in performing the audit. Our opinion on your compliance with federal and state grants was also unmodified, a clean, meaning a clean opinion, meaning you complied in all material respects with your grant compliance. Um, unmodified opinions on both the financial statements and your grant compliance is an absolute must in an audit. Um, anything other than unmodified means there is an issue with the financial statements or your compliance with uh, grants. There, we are also required to report on any material weaknesses or significant uh, deficiencies in internal controls. I'm also happy to report that we had no findings that rose to the level of a material weakness or a significant deficiency. Um, with respect to the financial condition of the uh, district, um, the, you ended the year with uh, approximately uh, $9,969,000 million in fund balance, which was broken out uh, in capital reserve of $4,077,898. These are funds that the board has set aside by uh, board resolution to fund capital expenditures. If you want to follow along uh, with the numbers, it's on page 80 of the uh, bigger book. What I'm reviewing is, starts on page 74, goes through uh, page 80, where the summary is, is the budgetary comparison schedule of your general fund. Uh, general fund is the major operating fund of the district. It's where probably 98% of your expenditures uh, are accounted for. Um, if you look at the end on page 80 is the summary of fund balance, and fund balance is important to board members because as you prepare uh, for the upcoming budget, you want to know how much money you have and what those monies are for. Um, and as you see, uh, we ended the year June 3rd to 23 with 9,969,172. Uh, capital reserve funds of 4,077,898. And those are funds, again, that the board has put aside by resolution um, to fund capital projects that are in the long-range facility plans. Those monies are restricted for those purposes. Can't use them for tuition costs, health benefit costs, or operating costs. Uh, strictly restricted for capital reserves. That reserve increased approximately 440000 over last year. So you put, uh, increase that reserve by putting monies in there. You also had maintenance reserve of $1,666,091. Of those are funds, again, that are put aside by board resolution to fund costs related to required maintenance of school facilities. Uh, those funds can't be used for capital expenditures, and they cannot be used for instructional expenditures. Uh, they could only be used for required maintenance of school facilities. Uh, Capital expenditures are different than required maintenance and capital adds life and value uh, to the facilities where maintenance keeps the facilities in their current working order. Uh, you also have an unemployment compensation reserve of $213,755 and those are funds that are set aside to pay unemployment claims. Um, the district has elected many, many years ago to self-insure its unemployment claims. So when people go on unemployment, the claims come into the district, it's reviewed, if you agree with it, uh, we pay those claims dollar for dollar. Uh, there's two sources of funds. There's the district monies, which is here, the 213, and then there's uh, monies that the employees contribute that's in a different account. Uh, that reserve increased nine. $1,244.
The next two items, uh, committed year-end encumbrances and assigned year encumbrances of one million three eleven five seventy two and seven hundred and eighty two dollars seven hundred eighty two thousand five hundred five dollars represent open purchase orders at the end of the year for goods and services that we have ordered or awarded contracts for but those goods have not been received and those contracts have not been completed we don't really owe anybody money because we didn't receive anything but once those contracts are performed and those goods are received in the district, those encumbrances roll over into the budget and they get expensed as a expenditure uh, in the next year. In all reality, the $1,311,000 and the $782,000, it has been committed and assigned for specific pur purchases. And by this point in time of the year, those POs uh, have been liquidated. Um, the, the contracts have been uh, rendered, serviced, and the goods have been received. We also had designated for subsequent year expenditures, 93,556. That's the portion of fund balance that the board chose to use in the 23-24 budget to balance that budget. So when the district um, prepared the 23-24 budget, you had all your expenses, you had all your revenues, and to balance that budget, you used the additional 93,556 to balance it. Those funds are no longer available going forward to fund future expenses. They're funding expenses in the 23-24 year. You, you also had what's called insurance recovery uh, expenditure reserve of 165,361. These are monies that came in from insurance claims where we received the money, but we haven't spent the money uh, for the purpose that the claim was filed. So as we take care of those repairs or those capital improvements, these funds will be appropriated to the budget and spent on those uh, repairs or uh, capital expenditures to, uh, to fix the district facilities. Um, 165, 361 is what has not been sent, spent of all the insurance claim funds that have been received. That leaves you with the unassigned fund balance. These are the funds that are available going forward to fund future expenses. Um, any type of expenses, could be capital, could be maintenance, could be salaries, could be health benefits. Um, it's one million six fifty eight four thirty four. Um, it's the maximum that the district is allowed to have in that uh, unassigned fund balance. It represents one and a half percent of your budget, which is roughly one million three hundred ninety thousand, plus an additional about two hundred and seventy thousand of unbudgeted state aid uh, that we received during the year. Um, overall, financially. Uh, the district is in very sound, stable condition, um, has some uh, reserves set aside for capital improvements as well as maintenance. Uh, you have the insurance recovery uh, monies to, to carry out the, uh, the, those claims, as well as you have the maximum amount you're allowed to have an unassigned fund balance. So from fi financial aspect, uh, the district is in uh, very sound condition. If there's no questions, I'll go through the general recommendations. And that's, you'll find in the smaller report, the last page, page 15, is a summary of, fun, uh, of the findings. We had uh, overall six findings. Uh, again, none which were considered material weaknesses or to fit or uh, significant deficiencies in internal controls. Uh, the first one under financial planning, accounting, and reporting um, deals with uh, procedures related to approving uh, the June monthly report. Uh, the, in the statute, the board has to approve that report within 60 days of year end. It has to be submitted to the county, I believe, by August uh, 10th. Um, we 
a little bit late in doing both of those, so uh, in the future we just have to make sure that we approve that report timely and we submit, submit it to the county timely um, at year end. Under school purchasing, we had a re recommendation regarding uh, continuing our efforts to improve our purchasing procedures, which have been uh, in greatly improved over the years. Uh, we just had some uh, issues where uh, state contract vendors and cooperative contract vendors, although we're not required to go out to bid for them, um, we need to get the contract documentation from the co-ops to make sure that the contract is in effect and that the vendor is charging us the prices that were in that co-op contract award. Under co-ops, another uh, government entity goes out to bid on certain products and certain services and you are allowed to piggyback off those contracts and that and therefore you are not required to go out to bid uh, the only thing is they they maintain the co-ops maintain that contract documentation so we got to get that in-house um, we had one situation where a minor situation where a uh, a vendor went over the bid threshold uh, at the end of the year. We just need to watch that, and if that happens, we've got to go out to bid the following year. And then finally, in the purchasing, just uh, your resolutions. Um, you approve many contracts and services in the minutes. Uh, there was just a couple that didn't identify how you procured those goods meaning did you award them through a cooperative? Did you award them as a professional service? Were they awarded as an emergency? Um, so if the resolutions could just be more descriptive in saying this is a professional service contract award or this is purchased under a co-op or state contract or it's an emergency purchase or it's a competitive bid, um, that would be helpful uh, to us as the auditor. School food service, we had three recommendations there. The first item uh, deals with reconciling the sales that are on the food service management company's reports and the sales that get deposited into our accounts. There was a difference between what they said the sales were and what the district said the sales were. We need to reconcile those two records. Uh, second item on the food service, uh, somehow during the year uh, the contract guarantee profit was amended. Uh, the contract that was approved by the board was 400000 guaranteed uh, profit. The uh, operating statement from the food service management company said two fifty. Um, there was no resolution approved by the board to change that. Uh, that has to be reviewed with them to see uh, how that was changed. Then finally in food service, uh, we just had a situation where we had uh, certain expend capital expenditures that were made out of food service fund that required to be approved by the Department of Agriculture. Um, certain capital expenditures such as building improvements, uh, you have to get their permission to spend those funds. And then we had some catering services um, that weren't reimbursed from the other funds. So if the services are not for the school service program, if they're outside catering services, they have to be paid for from other funds or other entities uh, to make the food service fund whole. And then finally, under student body activities, those are the accounts that are maintained at the school sites. Uh, they account for uh, school uh, activities, school clubs, organizations, and athletic events. Um, we noted that we need to develop some formal procedures to establish uh, accounting and reporting for donations collected at sporting events, and we have to make sure those monies are deposited timely. Um, in checking the, the receipts uh, for the year, there was only two deposits related to sporting events. 
Um, it's unlikely that there were only two events where money were, were collected. So we got to tighten that up as well. Um, that's my report. Uh, six recommendations. Uh, again, no material weakness, no significant deficiencies, and uh, unmodified opinions on both your financial statements and your grant compliance. Thank you, Mr. Bliss. You're welcome. Questions? Thank you. Good night, everyone. All right, just uh, recognition of the students of the month that are on here as well. Um, and um, that was really it. I want to thank again everyone for coming out tonight. Uh, the administrators, the administrative team in the back who's here every month, thank you so much for all you do, guys. Um, you work really hard and you're always here supporting us, supporting the board. So thank you very much. Uh, in progress, that's it. Thank you, Dr. Tomko. Uh, do we have any reports tonight from the state monitor, Thomas Egan? Do my best, Mr. Regan, impersonation that I can. Uh, Mr. Regan's watching, as he always does, via the district's uh, social media platforms. Uh, he's reviewed the agenda that's being presented tonight and supports all recommendations uh, that the superintendent and myself have uh, presented to the Board of Education in regards to personnel, purchasing, and finance. Uh, he supports the budget initiatives uh, being proposed by the superintendent and myself that are uh, on the agenda tonight, uh, but he'll take into consideration any input uh, as we head towards the public hearing uh, that is uh, offered by the board. Um, he's all for doing what's in the best interest of the district. And then lastly, uh, he's very pleased with the results of the audit as was just presented this evening by Mr. Bliss and applauds the continued uh, successfulness of the business office under the leadership of the business administrator. That's all I got for him. His report. Thank you, Mr. Palladino. And report for Mr. Palladino, business administrator. Yeah, just to give the board a couple of updates since we didn't have a committee meeting um, last week prior to the board meeting. The middle school AC project is complete. We're working on um, closeouts. The high school AC project is moving along uh, pretty nicely. Uh, keep them, just to remind everybody, there's uh, air, new air conditioning being put in in the gym and uh, here in the auditorium. Uh, the middle school uh, expansion project, uh, we're still on target to go out to bid by the end of March. Uh, I'll keep you uh, posted as we get closer, hopefully to the end of the month. Uh, the property over at Ralph Street, uh, the two the Kondrick, uh, lot two lots that we purchased next to school number nine. Uh, we're in the process of upgrading the inside of the house and uh, we're looking into some uh, bids, uh, proposals for uh, renovating the, the parking lot so that we could hopefully move all of transportation down there by the start of school in uh, September. And then uh, lastly, just wanna congratulate my office, um, their ded dedication and their efforts um, uh, the, the main reasons why we did so well on the audit and we continue to do so well financially. That's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Palladino. Yep. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I just wanted to mention uh, also go over a little bit of the technical review um, for the budget that's on the agenda because um, I know you're going to open up in a minute to um, public comments on agenda items only. So just so everyone understands what this is, I've been saying it now for the nine years that I've been here um, and all of my years as an administrator, 25 years now, uh, the technical review is just exactly what it says. It's a technical review of the budget items um, that the administration in working with the board uh, want to get to the county for approval. We have, two, uh, we have two levels of approval here because we're still under a state monitor. Uh, we have to go to the county and the state. So it's a little bit more, um, you know, arduous for us, for Mr., uh, especially for Mr. Paladino, but I want to commend Mr. Paladino. He did an incredible job um, working on uh, what we uh, put together, which we think is a, uh, uh, a very aggressive uh, budget that you see uh, for the technical review. So how this works is we sit down in committees with the board and we basically see uh, what, this, uh, what this board, who basically acts as the barometer for the, the township, 
um, what uh, we want for the district in the upcoming year. Uh, one of the things that you'll see there is um, there, was a, there was a thought process several months ago um, of the board to possibly, um, since our free and reduced numbers were pretty high and we were on a, um, we were basically on a campaign to try to get parents to fill out free and reduced lunch forms because we do have a number of parents uh, who still have not filled those out and um, we still have a, a number of students in arrears um, of their accounts for, for uh, lunch that um, the board uh, uh, challenged us to attempt to make meals free for all students. So that's what you see in this technical review. Um, so part of this review has a certain amount of monies in there so that every child eats for free every day, all 180 days. Um, we also have some um, increases for health care. Obviously, uh, we were just notified, I think today, Mr. Paladino had the incredible news that uh, are going to be anywhere from 15, 18 to 20 percent increase, uh, which is a very large number uh, for health care increases. We have bargaining unit um, contracts that are settled that when we're also in negotiations. So, so that was it too. We have enrollment increases, et cetera. Um, just to be um, very clear too, even with this higher number, um, we are still uh, about $4 million under adequacy. Uh, you may not think that that's possible with some of the aid that we had and, and whatnot, but there are a lot of, there are a lot of increases in uh, transportation costs, especially for special ed students outside the district, uh, astronomical increases there. Um, the Governor Murphy's, uh, I guess, breakdown of monies, uh, first time in a long time, or maybe ever, I don't know, Matt can maybe correct me, the equalization aid uh, was kind of capped at a certain amount. Uh, some money had to go specifically to security aid, et cetera. So there are some differences that didn't let us use all that money towards equalization. Um, so again, even with that higher number, we're still um, under adequacy. The board will uh, hopefully uh, approve the technical review tonight, then go to the county, then go to the state, and then over the next several weeks, we will uh, again sit in committees and uh, basically break this down to the best we can for the township. Uh, also, don't forget the uh, ESSER monies or special monies for COVID or COVID money, if you want to call it, are now no longer. Uh, in between that time, this board was committed to adding numerous positions for RTI, uh, more interventionists, coaches, et cetera. Um, all of those now have to be funded through the tax levy. So, um, so there are some uh, interesting conversations that need to happen uh, with regard to this budget after the technical review. However, uh, I would imagine that uh, the pencils uh, are going to be sharpened, and uh, I don't think this is the budget that we'll be presenting to you as a community uh, in a few weeks. But again, if you don't put everything in it, you can never put it back. So that's why technical, re technical reviews, in my opinion, um, should be uh, a very moderate or at least a liberal piece of uh, budget or fiscal um, you know, fiduciary responsibility for the simple fact that, again, you can't add stuff. So when you start out not with everything, it's very hard to cherry pick on what you're going to keep and what's important to the community. Um, so that's where we are, just so everybody sees it. Uh, right now, the average um, increase, I think we're over 10%, right? Uh, the average increase on a house is, uh, an assessed house is 430, 436, $433? $413 is the average increase right now. Um, so that's where we're at. Uh, we also wanted to point out, before we turn it back over, uh, that in the nine years I've been here, this board has been very uh, critical of cutting budgets. I don't know of many that we've been over 2%. That's why we have such a high bank cap. But I know I sat here last year telling everybody who was here, everybody out there, and it's definitely on record somewhere um, in, the, uh, in the metaverse out there uh, that uh, this, we were going to be in this situation. Uh, as you keep cutting and cutting and cutting and going under 2%, um, you just, you know, keep drowning and drowning and drowning. So uh, we are definitely past that point. We were at that point last year and we cut one more time. So uh, we are going to have to make up some of that money this year regardless. So just so everybody's aware of that. Okay, I'm not saying it's going to be where we are now, but that's where we're at for the technical review. So thank you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Tonka. Um, 
Let's open up remarks from citizens on agenda items only. Can I have a motion? Motion. And a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have one person signed up, Michael Sheldon. Are we still using the three minute rule? Good evening, Michael Sheldon, 47 Floyd Street. Uh, one agenda item that I'd like clarified, 12.14. This is $46,500 for Solutions Architecture. That is the firm that uh, is designing the would-be shared services parking garage that's supposed to be constructed next to the middle school. Uh, since the initial round of bids were rejected early last summer, there haven't been any new plans um, issued, at least publicly. I'd like to know where things stand at this point because over the last several months, there have been continued just promises that next month, next month, so next month, the new uh, version two of the parking garage would be released. So I'd like an update on that. The uh, CAFR and AMR reports that were just uh, uh, presented tonight by Mr. Bliss, I trust those will be posted, they will be made public, uh, hopefully later tonight or at least tomorrow morning on the di on board docs that I won't have to file an OPA request to get those documents. Uh, Mr. Caff, uh, Mr. Bliss pointed out that the general fund balance as of June 30th last year was nearly 10 million. The year before it was 11.4, the year before that it was 9.7, and the year before that was 7 million. So the point I'm trying to make here is that uh, due to prudent and responsible fiscal management, the, 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 the district has been, been sporting very healthy budget surpluses each year, which then leads to the plea once again we need to move, the board needs to move to return autonomy to the district. We've had a state monitor here now for 10 years. The, I think the last payment for the state loan that was extended to us back in 2015, that will be finished next year. A number of you have campaigned on that promise that you were going to move to get rid of the state monitor. I'd like to see some motion on that ASAP. And uh, as far as the uh, uh, introduced budget for tonight, I guess I was right when I publicly posted uh, over the weekend that as things currently stand, the uh, tax increase on the meeting assessed home would be about $400. You guys said 413 thereabouts, but this is outrageous. Governor Murphy announced last month in his budget address that every school district in New Jersey, including Belleville, would be fully funded for the next academic year. He's giving us another $12 million next year on top of the extra 10 million he gave last year. I think the total amount of state aid now Belleville will be receiving next year is close to $70 million. There is no way in the world you guys can justify another tax increase. Best case, worst case scenario, it should be a $0 tax increase. Ideally, you should be rolling back the taxes. I don't know how in the world you're going to get away with this, with the tax increase, any tax increase during the next year. But, of course, this isn't the end of the story. As Dr. Tomko said, you're submitting the, the budget to the county, to Mr. Zara and the state for technical review, you still have to have a public hearing, but I hope for everyone's sake that when you finally announced the, the, the final numbers after you talk to your manager in the back of the showroom and you don't come back two weeks, two weeks later, that the tax increase is at, in the worst case scenario, scenario, zero dollars. Otherwise, you're gonna have a hell of a lot of explaining to do to the community. So that's it for the first session. Okay, thank you. Moving on to suggested resolutions on personnel. Can I have a motion for 9.1 to 9 point, oh, I'm sorry. Motion to close. So moved. <laughs> Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Uh, and moving on to personnel and resolutions, recommendations from the superintendent. 9.1 to 9.23. Can I have a motion? Moved. And second. a second. Second. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none. Mr. Palladino, can you please call the roll? Trustee Darrow. Yes. Trustee Massaggio. Yes. Trustee Moniz. Yes. Trustee Pacheco. Yes. Trustee Williams. Yes. Vice President Dadis. Yes. President Benamini. Yes. Okay, and I see none for curriculum and instruction. 
So moving on to resolutions for board action and board policy, 11.1 to 11.16. Can I have a motion? So moved. And second? Who made second? Uh, any discussion? Wow, you guys are. All right, Mr. Palladino, can you please call the roll? Trustee Darrow. <clears throat> yes. Trustee Massaggio. Yes. Trustee Moniz. Yes. Trustee Pacheco. Yes. Trustee Williams. Yes. Uh, Vice President Dadis. Yes. President Benami. Yes. And resolutions on purchasing and business services, 12.1 to 12.16. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. And any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Paldino, please call the roll. Trustee Darrow. Yes. Trustee Massaggio. Yes. Trustee Moniz. Yes. Trustee Pacheco. Yes. Trustee Williams. Yes. Vice President Dadis. Yes. President Benamini. Yes. And resolutions on finance, 13.1 to 13.19. Motion? Motion. Second? Second. And any discussion on finance? None. Mr. Palladino, please call the roll. Trustee Darrow. Yes. Trustee Massaggio. Yes. Trustee Moniz. Yes. Trustee Pacheco. Yes. Trustee Williams. Yes. Vice President Dadis. Yes. President Benamini. Yes. All right, in public comment section on anything, we have two people scheduled to speak. Michael Sheldon first. Can I have a motion to open up this part of the comment? Motion. motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Michael Sheldon? I, would. I know. Good evening again, Michael Sheldon, 47th Light Street. I just want to start off by saying I was hoping that with the uh, uh, changing of the guard, so to speak, with the board this year, that uh, this draconian three-minute and five-minute uh, rule would be uh, put aside. Um, Gabby, you are the first board president to also have a col college degrees probably in the last 20 plus years. So I just want to uh, reference, if you haven't already looked at it, board policy 0167, section two, which says that in the event it appears the public portion of the meeting may exceed 45 minutes, the presiding offer, which, officer, which is you, may limit each statement made by a participant to not less than three minutes duration. So I would hope that you would take that into consideration for the next meeting and when you have this many people present, this is the reason why you have these few people because they know that basically lip service is given to community participation in these events. But I'll put that aside, that's a subject for another, another day. Um, during Mr. Bliss's remarks earlier tonight, he said that there was a significant discrepancy in the guaranteed profit for the suits, food service contract um, I would hope that the board would provide a written explanation for that before the next meeting. There's a difference of $150,000 there. That's not chicken feed, but um, you know, in the grand scheme of the board's budget, it's also relatively small, but it's, nevertheless, you should give us an explanation for that discrepancy. Uh, when I asked during the first public session about the parking garage situation, uh, there was no response. I'd like to know, when are you going to uh, go out to bid again for version two of that garage? You owe the state, you're contractually obligated to build a garage following that bond ordinance that was rushed through the process by the town council in April, on April 12th of 2022. So uh, I'd like uh, some update on that matter. Uh, the Oprah, the, um, the badgering part of the agenda, the, ba the Oprah section where you report the cost, I think my last entry in there amounts to over $2,000. Essentially what I asked for there was an update on the salaries for staff, which is something you guys automatically provide to the public, usually in every May, sometimes in June, when everyone is reappointed. But yet when I asked basically for an update of that same report ahead of time, as we entered this new calendar year, somehow it cost $2,500, including almost $400 for legal review. Makes no sense. I think you're just making, to be honest with you, I think the numbers are BS. 
you're making up numbers to suit your own political agenda. You want to dissuade people, especially me, from making Oprah requests. But we'll put that aside. I have less than two minutes, according to my clock here, so I want to address the, uh, the elephant in the room. We all know what happened last week. Garfield made the announcement that uh, starting July 1st, their new superintendent will be none other than Dr. Tomko. There's been no, no official statement, as far as I know, on the district's website, on its social media pages, about Dr. Tomko leaving. Now, I realize, according to his contract, as long as he gives you 90 days, at least 90 days advance notice, everything is good. But one of the things I'd like to ask tonight, the board president, the chair, the personnel, and the finance committees, uh, when Dr. Tomko leaves us on June 30th, what other monies will be given to him? Will he be able to cash in unused vacation days, un unused sick days? There's enough wiggle room in the contract where it could be argued that because he's leaving uh, uh, four years ahead of time, he could wind up with three months times four years, which amounts to one, one full extra year of compensation as he bids farewell to, to Belleville. So I'd like to know, if you're not prepared tonight, fine, but I'd like to have an email within the next few days, and I think it, you owe it to the community to publicly post it. What exactly is going on here? What uh, a confirmation tonight from Dr. Tomko that yes, he unfortunately is leaving Belleville to go to Garfield come July 1st, but I'd like to know how much more beyond his regular salary and benefits will Dr. Tomko be receiving after he departs Belleville? And I have 13, lucky 13, 12 seconds left now. I'll end it here. I hope you guys will answer some of my questions. Thank you. <coughs> By the way, I know I haven't been at the last couple of meetings, but unfortunately at the beginning of last month, I saw my shadow and had to stay in hibernation <laughs> for an extra few weeks. So. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Sheldon. Um, just want the, uh, the public to know that uh, the parking garage will go out to bid again at the end of March, so we're looking at another week or two. We're just finalizing some things, so we'll, we'll make that public. Thanks. I believe so, yeah. Okay, and Maria Rodriguez, you want to come up to the podium? <coughs> you state your name and your address. Buenas noches, eh, miembro de la Junta, familia de Belvio en general. Mi nombre es María Rodríguez, tengo un hijo de nueve años que cursa el tercer año. Eh, vengo abogando a ustedes porque hace un año mi familia y yo pasamos... Un momento. Okay. Is Miss Luna still here? Do we know? Okay, 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 okay. Thank you for coming to speak to us today. Just, um, I don't know if we have a translator here. And if we don't, would it be possible for you to write down your remarks? Y en no tener alguien que le pueda um, <laughs> que le pueda ayudar en el momento, será que usted no puede escribir lo que el, el tema en que quiera hablar para nosotros entender lo que lo que or email them to the superintendent. O si le puede mandar un correo electrónico al señor. Todo un año y no he tenido solución por eso he venido aquí. Okay. Okay. So 
So, um, Lucy, you can't tell me. Something? Mm -hmm. she's, she's not saying she's not saying she's not saying Sí, si la señora quiere traducir, perfecto. Ella no ha vuelto a usar perfectamente, pero espero que me entienda. Traducir, yeah. uh, muy bien, no hay problema. Sí, sí, sí. Okay. Bueno, como decía, mi nombre es María Rodríguez, vivo en la 50 Watchung de eh, Bellevue Avenue. 50 Watchung Avenue. Mi nombre es... Sorry, my name is Maria Rodriguez, and I live in 50 uh, Washington in Bellevue Avenue. In Bellevue. In Bellevue. Hace un año, eh, mi familia y yo pasamos un acontecimiento muy grande. Uh, it's a, a years ago, my family have uh, happened something bad to us. Que hasta el día de hoy no hemos tenido respuesta ni solución. Y no hemos, incluso ni los culpables, nos han dicho nada. Um, they don't, she doesn't have any solution about the, the uh, happen with her son, Dandy Mejia. Mi hijo, como consecuencia de una detención, fue expuesto a, baja, a bajas temperaturas en el patio de la escuela número 4. Last year, fue la, eh, febrero 7. On uh, February 7th, uh, Dandy was punished because he behaved bad, and they put him outside of the building, and, and the, the temperature was very, very low, and he, he, he was very cold in the feet. Mi hijo estaba ya, eh, ya, no, ya no sentía los pies del frío. He don't feel the feet. Ese día yo no lo fui a recoger. That day, he, she doesn't uh, pick it up. Sino que yo me vine a enterar hasta allá las ocho de la noche. Um, she noted about that um, eight o'clock in the night. El día siguiente, nosotros fuimos a hablar con la principal. The next day, she going to speak with the principal of the school, school number four. Y la, 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 la responsable de quien había sacado a mi hijo, eh, ella misma le dijo a mi esposo, porque mi esposo sí habla inglés, ¿Cómo se que llama? El, la señora Kirchner, um, Miss Kirchner, Miss Kirchner. Eh, la señora Kirchner le dijo a mi esposo que ella había sacado a mi hijo como consecuencia de, de la detención, que Dandy tenía que aprender con las consecuencias. Um, Next day, um, Mrs. Kidney said to her husband uh, what she did to Dandy because Dandy behaved bad and that was the consequence, put it outside in the cold weather. No fue la respuesta que nosotros queríamos porque, o sea, mi niño, si hubiese pasado más tiempo ahí, las consecuencias hubieran sido más delicadas. Um, she said if his dandy was stay more longer over there, the consequence was very bad for him. Venimos a hablar con el señor Tonko. We come in to talk with Miss Tonko. Tres veces. Three times. Um, como respuesta a, 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 puede decir, como respuesta a su, a, a como una madre preocupada por su hijo. La respuesta, de, la respuesta del señor Tonko fue ponerme una orden de restricción, mandarme a que gritara el personal de, de, del hogar a gritarme a mi, a mi, en mi casa. Miss uh, Tonko um, only said to her, to her to put a retention to go to the school and send somebody from the school to scream into her in the door, her, in her house. Um, seguimos, segui, seguí buscando respuestas, no las tuve. Él siempre iba buscando el comportamiento del niño, pero ¿dónde está lo que hicieron el, el padecimiento del niño? No lo tuve, no tuve esa respuesta. 
she didn't have to respond about what happened. And she keep in, uh, waiting for the response. Um, lo más fácil para el señor Tonko fue sacar al niño de la escuela número 4 y pasarla para la 10. The solution, like Ms. Tonk, Mr. Tonko, was take Dandy from uh, school number 4 and put it to the uh, school number uh, 10. Se acabó el tiempo. No, pero empezamos con anterior. Gracias. Puedo terminar porque como estábamos esperando el traslado. She say if she can finish. Her, 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 yeah, her time is, her time is up. Ya se terminó el tiempo. Se lo, he manda, se lo hemos mandado. Incluso el problema es que al niño lo han querido catalogar como especial. niño especial. Y las mismas evaluaciones de la escuela les han dado con la piedra en la boca que el niño no es un niño especial. El niño ya estaba, incluso, hasta va a perder un año porque el niño ha entrado en una negación y un bloqueo y nadie hace nada. He hablado con la principal, he hablado con todo el mundo, nadie hace nada. You want to translate? No. Oh, um, this. Okay. okay. So we're not going to be able to respond to this. Obviously, my Spanish is nowhere near uh, acceptable. So I'll just say in English that we're not able to respond on a student matter publicly. It's a private student matter. Obviously, the mother can speak about her own child, but the board and its representatives can't speak publicly about her child. But we will speak to her, uh, the school officials will speak to her directly. Thank you. And a motion to close public participation? Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Okay, and before we, did, uh, did anyone have any comments before we close tonight? Everything going on? Okay, hearing none, um, can I have a motion to close tonight's meeting? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, have a good night. <laughs>